In this video, I'm going to show you how to figure the ridge height so that you can transfer it to a room addition roof to actually build the roof. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need to do is find the center of the room addition or the center of the house. I'm just kind of drawing this out here. This method right here can be used if you have exposed framing. You can find the center and measure up and subtract the height of the wall. But uh, if you don't, then you can simply go into the attic and go down from the center point. And I think I had that right here. I drew a line up from the center. So figure the center of the room addition, go straight up. And you don't need the foundation down to figure this. You can just measure, you can draw the line, set the level on top of the framing wall, and then go over. And if you have drywall or something on top, you can simply add a block and use a straight edge, use whatever fits in there. I have like a two by six here, but you might only have three inches, might need to shave the end off of a two by four or shave a little more off the two by four and then put a block under it if you have electrical or something in the way there. If you have heating ducts and stuff like that in the way, you're probably gonna have to remove it or figure out a different way to do something like this. But after you get it leveled, you can measure the distance from the top of the ridge to the top of the framing wall plates, which is going to be the measurement we will need to figure out our roof rafter lengths. Once we have the measurements, we can actually form our roof rafter or what we might need to create a truss roof. And you can see it here. Now I'm measuring from the top of the rafter. If you're going to build a truss, you're going to need to go to the center of the ridge. So our measurements here are kind of like this, nine and five eighths. And I drew a center line here for the ridge. If you have a inch and a half thick ridge, then the center will be three quarters. If you're just going to use this method to figure the roof rafter lengths, then why not just go to the edge of the ridge where the rafter connects instead of going to the center. But for trusses, you will need to, if you are going to make your own trusses, you'll need to go to the center. Let's go ahead and move this over to the side. And the first thing we need to do with this is make it into a triangle. The Pythagorean theorem will not work. The Pythagorean theorem is the math formula that we will use to figure the length of this if we can't, if we don't have it. If you have it already built, and uh, the home's already built, you're going to be building the same size roof. You can simply measure it to get your, um, your length. But if not, you will need to use the math formula. So the first thing we will need to do will be to subtract the 9 and 5 eighths from the 4 foot 9 inches, 9 and a quarter inches. Um, now, the... Four foot nine inches was the overall length here. We need to subtract nine and five eighths from that. So if we convert this to a decimal, and again, you can always do this if you can work with fractions, go ahead and knock yourself out. You don't need to use the decimals. But if you convert it to decimals, you can simply subtract it to um, subtract the two numbers. That gives us 47.625 or 47 and 5 eighths inches. And if we convert the decimal to inches, it will give us 3 foot 11 and 5 eighths inches, which is what we have here. Now the Pythagorean theorem, this also needs to be a 90 degree or a right angle for it to work also. So what we are doing are multiplying these two numbers together after we convert them to decimals, which is what we're going to do next. 47.625 times 47.625 equals 2,268.14. We are going to put that number down here and then add it to this number once we get it by multiplying these two numbers together. If we convert this number to a fraction, 
coming to a decimal, this is what we get. Multiply it by its times itself. Gives us 9,072.56. Add these two numbers together, which would be this and this. That gives us that gives us eleven thousand three hundred and forty point seven. We want to take the get the square root of that eleven thousand three hundred and forty point seven. The square root of this number is is one hundred and six point four nine or eight foot ten and a half inches, which is what this length is going to be right here. Now, this is the reason why I'm making the video, made it in the first place. Someone contacted me and wanted to know how to line the ridges up if these measurements might be different. So if we have a 16 foot home addition that's wide and a 16 foot wide existing building, then the ridges will line up perfectly if we use the same pitch. If the width is different, this one here is going to be wider than, and we use the same pitch, then the ridge will be higher. So this ridge, the new ridge, would be higher than the existing ridge. If this measurement was smaller, let's say it was 12 feet, then the ridge would be lower. New ridge would be lower than the existing one. Let's go ahead and just zoom in here. You can see it's a little got a smaller slope to it and let's go ahead and zoom in and build our little box there is the existing this is the existing rafter slope here and this here is the new one once we have our measurements we can do our math again we are going to stay with the nine and five eighths here and the height here will still be the same. We want our ridge to line up. The only difference will be the length of the rafter and the span um, for the rafter. So let's go ahead and pull up our sheet here. And I am going to just whip right through this. I'm just doing it a second time to give you an idea. If we convert the 3 foot 11 and 5 eighths, it will give us this decimal. We multiply it together, provides us with this number. And on the bottom, nine foot 11 inches and a quarter gives us 119 and a quarter. Multiply them together. That's this down here. That gives us this number. Add the two together, this number and this number. And then that gives us 16,488.7. If we take the square root of that, that is going to be 128.41 or 10 foot 8 and 3 eighths inches. Again, if you need more help with square rooting something or any of this, uh, let me know and I can always create uh, another video for that. Now, one more thing I'd like to point out is that the fascia board, if you change the pitches, Let's just say that you have a 5 and 12 pitch here and a 4 and 12 pitch over here. It's going to affect the fascia board. So you will need to move one of the sides in or move one of the other sides out in order to make it work to where the fascia board blends in together. So, for example, if I was to take this section here and move it back. So let's just say that it's it's two foot from the wall to the corner here. If I moved it back six inches, um, went ahead of myself there. If I moved it back six inches, this back, it's going to raise this up. And then th there would be a point where this one here would blend into it. So this one's going to have to be a little smaller and this one here is going to have to be a little longer to make them intersect to where they work out on the um, house to where they blend in. I mean, you can do it like this. It's just going to look a little, little strange there. Again, I want to point out for your um, trusses, if you're going to make trusses instead of uh, use conventional framing, make sure that you add in for your three quarter inch or the dis difference. Um, the half of the span 
of the ridge. So that will need to be in there to make your roof trusses.